is this truly the worst TV show ever made? Or let alone the worst thing Marvel has ever done? No, it's fine. And quite enjoyable, actually. With some definite hiccups along the way. She-Hulk is exactly how I've always known her to be. Self-aware, a bit promiscuous, a fun tone, and acts as a feminine icon. All of these things match the material, but the outright sexualized nature of those comics is actually more downplayed here. The rage I've seen against the show is a bit ridiculous. Like, I get it. It's not for everyone. It's a lighthearted comedy in the MCU, but it also has some really meaningful character writing, particularly in the back half of the season. My wife found it extremely relatable and thought-provoking as a woman, and I appreciated that. It's not the action-packed MCU fest, but it's a fun ride, and I think the dismissive nature of a lot of fans is quite strange, especially with some derogatory terms like the MCU. Like, I get where you're coming from, but come on. Is there some outright cringy stuff? Absolutely. The speech to Bruce at the beginning of the first episode, the twerking scene, among others, very cringeworthy. And I see what they were trying to do with these things at times, but it comes across as try hard. Just a little too much. I also found the romance plots to be largely uninteresting and stereotypical of television where everyone is so trashy with their love lives. But how they deal with the aftermath of these relationships is actually compelling for Jen's journey as She-Hulk. From here on out, there will be big spoilers for the rest of the season, so if you haven't watched it or haven't finished it, this is your time to check out. Spoilers from here on out. Her romance with Daredevil, despite a couple tropey things, is actually great in comparison to the others. Lots of chemistry there, and well, it's true to the source material that She-Hulk has a fling with just about everyone or every male superhero. But Daredevil himself is treated so well here, from hearing his theme music from his show briefly, confirming it's the same one, which honestly made me tear up, to a hallway fight scene which is just so classic. And it's great to have Charlie Cox back and see that Matt is happier now after all that he's been through. She-Hulk is almost made into a female Deadpool here with the fourth wall breaking. It's funny, I laugh a lot but I'm not sure how much it really adds to the show. More than once, I found the fourth wall breaks distracting from the compelling main story. And when the finale starts firing on all cylinders, they do a huge meta detour into straight parody territory. It was really clever and funny at first, but it overstays its welcome and overshadows and mucks up the entire final conflict that had me very engaged. And then it just turned into being anticlimactic. Criticizing the idea of super blood when you've been teasing it all season and given that's how she got her powers to throw out the entire climax like that is a bit hypocritical. I didn't like how they just took all that away and it's a neat little bow. You miss pretty much all of the resolution. It doesn't make much story sense even if I appreciate the Kevin jokes and the MCU self-awareness. That's clever, that's great, but it completely overshadowed anything else. Like why was there a fight scene in the fourth wall break? I just, I get the idea here. I think it could have been a lot quicker, a lot tighter, and you could have still had a final conflict play out like what was happening before. But instead, it just kind of feels anticlimactic and like an idea, a good idea taken too far. Let's talk about Emil Blonsky, AKA the abomination. I still don't buy this hippie guru turn. Given he breaks his parole at the end and transforms, but then leaves a camartage, I think a villainous return is likely. I appreciate them trying to make more of the character since he has heroic roots, but because of what the finale does, his journey feels rushed. It doesn't feel like we get the resolution we're supposed to. That credit scene is teasing something though. I'm somewhere between disappointed and refreshed when it comes to his role in the show, but I maintain that the MCU has a problem with making everyone quippy or near parodies of themselves. I feel that with Abomination here, big time. It's been over a decade, he changed in prison, but to make one of the all-time Hulk villains into a polygamous hippie life coach just doesn't sit well with me. It's all a facade for now, at least that's my theory. He did leave prison for good. There are some laughs and all, and there's some good insight into Jen's journey from him. It's not all bad. I just wanted more from the character, and I don't love this trend. I didn't necessarily hate it, and I'm glad they finally acknowledged him, but I'm really hoping he ends up being the villain in the upcoming Thunderbolt because he deserves that return or to be utilized in a more meaningful epic way not just as a side joke to service one of the other characters but on the other hand daredevil is done right and with a ton of respect with the right amount of humor it's a give and take long is a bit of both i've seen that people are upset that this show spoils the sopranos on one hand that sucks i haven't watched the sopranos on the other hand it's been out for over a decade as well what do you do i also don't love how hulk was sidelined after two episodes but 
it was never his show, so I guess it's okay. As far as his return, that's a big bomb to drop. I suspected he went to Sakaar and would set up some kind of future storyline, but I never thought we'd see his son Scar in the MCU. That is going to be a big story. World War Hulk, anyone? There seems to be some seeds being set up here for that. Ah, the infamous CGI. Yeah, there are times it looks really bad on She-Hulk and there's times it looks fine to pretty good. After a few episodes I kind of forgot about it and just enjoyed it for what it was despite the uncanny valley but the budget may not have equated the vision here. The fact though that they were able to turn Jen into more than just her usual comic book sex symbol self makes me appreciate it so much. The show could have been a showcase of female objectification but instead it condemns it and speaks to many other important themes. There's some really good character writing here underneath the hit or miss humor distracting but amusing fourth wall breaks and some disappointing story beats. The show isn't as clever as it thinks it is when it's trying to be, but when it relaxes into the natural story for its characters and leans into that comic book source material, it can be riveting, relatable, and fun. If we see a season two, I'd like to see a bigger balance of the courtroom drama angle and the super heroics. Keep the cameos coming as they were a treat and that was always the most fascinating portion, not as a disservice to She-Hulk, but her interaction with the larger Marvel Universe. Dial back the romance and love life angle, it gets to be too tropey. And besides, I totally ship her and Daredevil, I'm just saying. Ultimately, some episodes were better than others, and some elements really worked while others caused big cringe. But I'm happy, because this was a huge risk that I mostly had a good time watching through. I just wish the episodes, especially the ending, had been given longer run times and appropriate timing to further flesh out certain story beats. I mean, these episodes were short, and these MCU show finales often rush through too much so a lot gets glossed over that become anticlimactic. Making it a joke here doesn't cover that up, even if it's enjoyable for what it is, yet it overstays its welcome. I also appreciate that the show knew the kind of feedback it was gonna get, it knew the hate it was going to get, it was very aware of some of the toxic criticism it was going to get, and it uses that as leverage for some of its comedy, and I find that really intelligent, so credit where credit's due. It's just nice that the show remembered to have fun. For example, one of my favorite parts of the entire season was at the beginning of the finale episode, where the opening credits are done in the style, replicating the style of the Incredible Hulk series with Bill Bixby from the 70s. I loved that show growing up. I own the entire thing on Blu-ray and that was just really cool to see. And they did a practical She-Hulk, which makes me think, could they have done a practical She-Hulk for the whole thing? Regardless, that was a treat. One of the best parts. I give She-Hulk Attorney at Law season one, 3.5 out of five stars. Thanks so much for watching. Hit that like button please hit that subscribe button and remember, always look for the good.